Well, it's very simple, and it's something that I think enjoyed cross-party support. It was bringing the only building that was built between 1945 and 1959 that housed uh, tenants that were subject not to the provisions of rent control and therefore did not have the benefits of pre-war rent control to the same regime. And this is a policy uh, that Peter Caruana had set out to the tenants of the building in letters uh, that they'd sent to him in July 2007. And when we were elected in 2011, it appeared that this had not yet been dealt with in the appropriate way. We were pursuing exactly the same policy in a way that we had ensured we'd taken advice on. So we took advice from Ricky Roder QC, we took advice from Mark Isola QC, we took advice subsequently from James Nish QC in the context of the legal challenge. And this was something that Charles Brousson had started when he was Minister for Housing. A very clear and obvious continuation of the policy of the previous administration expressed by uh, Peter Caruana in a letter in the way that we thought was appropriate. But you must have known when you introduced the bill in Parliament that it would be benefiting a very specific, very small group of people but you didn't really spell that out in Parliament, did you? I don't know that I didn't. I think I actually did. I, I was delivering what was a very technical explanation about a very technical piece of legislation. This is not a piece of legislation that's going to light up the, the, the world because it's so exciting in its social policy um, effect. It's something that is very technical. And, and I read the note that was prepared for me by the draftsman of the legislation to explain the effect of the legislation. And it was obvious that it would affect the tenants of Matilda Francis Flats because that's the reason that Paul Alwan, who had become Minister for Housing, unfortunately, because of the death of Charles Brousson, and it was only in that context that he'd become Minister for Housing, um, and I explained that. So, um, so, so the fact that he was a tenant as well was just a coincidence? It, well, it was a coincidence in the sense that he had become unexpectedly Minister for Housing, but he expressed in Cabinet his conflict, as I've said. He expressed through me his conflict in Parliament. This was not hidden. This was made clear. I ensured that people were aware of that. And subsequently, he has not taken the benefit of the measure in order to, I think, demonstrate his good faith in the context of how uh, the reform came about. So I think, if anything, Paul Alain must be commended for the way that he's discharged his functions. But isn't the principle that he shouldn't be able to take advantage of it rather than he doesn't want to because uh, he doesn't think it's fair? Well, I, I think that's uh, not the principle. I think it would be completely uh, erroneous to think that legislation is made in Parliament only if it doesn't apply to ministers. So, for example, when we make legislation in Parliament on the whole gamut of issues that affect social policy in Gibraltar or affects Gibraltarians, you don't carve out the ten ministers or the seven members opposite. What you do, and this is what the rules require for good reason, is that you declare if something is going to affect a particular minister and you explain it in that way. And in this context, Paul Alvang's potential benefit was declared. He did not vote and subsequently has not even sought to take advantage of the measure. The other thing is that this law only benefits some of the tenants in Francis Flats, not the others. So some are paying the full whack and others have their rents controlled. Is that fair? That is the advice that we had as to how we should be able to legislate. You, you can remember? take your own view, can't you? Well, you can take your, if you act against advice, then you risk being put in a position where the law that you make is not going to withstand challenge. Remember that this law has not withstood a challenge on appeal to the Court of Appeal, but did withstand challenge to the Supreme Court of Gibraltar, where Mr. Mrs. Justice Ramaji Prescott found that it was constitutional. And now we're going to appeal further to the Privy Council, the equivalent of the UK Supreme Court or House of Lords, to defend the constitutionality of this measure because we acted in keeping with the advice that we took. We did not act on a frolic of our own. We followed the advice as to how we could achieve the objective that we thought and think is the proper and right objective to pursue. In relation to pre-war dwellings, for example, a pre-war dwelling can be taken out of protection if it is subject to refurbishment, etc. So, you know, this is a complex area of law. We think we were doing and are doing the right thing. We're trying to protect tenants of these types of properties from landlords who want to put up rents quite exponentially, 150, 200 uh, percent, sometimes even more than that. I think that's the right thing for us to do. We are happy to have done it. We're proud to have done it. We will continue to defend the fact that we did it and we think we will prevail.